On this hunt, I'm headed deep into the Tok River country of the Alaska Range with my brother Danny and my buddy Paul in search of doll sheep. Paul's over there saying there's rams above us. This terrain is as remote and rugged as it gets, but the payoff is a big game hunter's dream. There he is. I'm Steven Ronella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. The Toke Management Area. This might mean nothing to most people, but to mountain hunters, it is the top tier of high country, public land, sheep hunts. This is the Big Leagues, an area that offers high quality and challenging hunts in one of Alaska's most majestic mountain ranges. An area renowned for its well-managed population of reclusive doll sheep. Every year, some 2,500 people apply for one of these tags. Drawn by lottery, your chances of actually pulling a tag run between about 1 and 2 percent. Some hunters have been applying religiously since the 1970s without ever hitting the jackpot. I managed to get lucky on my fifth try. The news came to me when my buddy Paul Neese from Vortex Optics texted me the following note, you drew my tag. Paul guided bighorn sheep hunters down in Idaho for years, and he's always dreamed of hitting a toke tag. So naturally, I invited him to come along. By Alaska law, any non-resident who wants to hunt doll sheep must be accompanied by a registered guide or a relative of at least second degree kindred who is a legal resident of the state. Fortunately for me, my brother Danny, an ecologist and avid hunter, lives in Anchorage and is more than happy to fill that role. Danny's a great hunter, methodical, modest, always prepared, and unflappable. Dropped off on a remote landing strip in the Toke Valley, the reality slowly sinks in as we begin to formulate a plan. After an entire year of studying maps, it's hard for me to believe that I'm finally here. If you can get up on that, on that little knob right there, you could look up this valley and, a lot, and at several of these. Right. The more you say it, you're probably right, is just to have one guy go there and then one or two guys go here. Paul, are you, are you planning to spend the night up there or no, come down what, either way? No, what I'll do is we'll, we'll coordinate. Before we take off, we'll match our watches up and we'll figure out, you know, a couple basic hand signals. And, and be watching for each other across on the hour. And if yeah. I get and I see some nice see like rams triple, that, are, that are good shooter rams, at least you'll know that there are rams on the other side and then you guys might decide to come and take a look at those rams. But we should be able to see a lot of, a lot of country that way between us. Sounds good. We should set up our gear anyway. This far north, days are long, with only a few hours of darkness each night. By the time our camp is thrown together, it's well past 9 p.m., but there's still several hours of daylight left, plenty of time to get in a little scout and put some eyes on the mountains. Even with the world's most coveted doll sheep tag in my pocket, my chances of actually killing a legal ram are still less than 50%. And to maximize my opportunities in this area, I've also brought along a tag for grizzly bear, and Paul has one for black bear. One thing I've found, I see a hell of a lot more grizzly tracks than grizzlies. <laughs> <laughs> they got way over you. Probably a good thing. It's almost like they got outriggers that leave other <laughs> sets of tracks. So we'll definitely be on the lookout for those as we scope out these ridges and basins. We scouted up the river to see, you know, what kind of views we get back in these valleys. We're kind of getting to the end of our scout, and I'm looking on this hill, and I got a black bear, and I get to looking a little more, 
and not far from the black bear is a grizzly, which I'm on right now, up and over to a doll up by a snow patch. It's not much, and they're miles away, but it's always encouraging to at least lay eyes on actual game. We make note of the bear's locations, but this is first and foremost a doll sheep hunt. That is the number one priority. The season doesn't start for another two days, but tomorrow, the real work begins. In the morning, before we split up, we figure out a plan where we're gonna look for each other later in the day, and we establish a rudimentary signaling system to communicate. If I give you this, that means whatever happened, we're headed down. You're bailing. We're bailing. Meet at camp. Yeah. Meet at camp. Okay. We don't find each other. We never see each other. None of this works out. You'll come down if we're not here. And I'm going to work my way up. What I'll try to do is I'll try to put myself in a visible spot. We can kind of visually keep tabs on each other and hopefully find some rams. <laughs> If he can reach there, he can have it, man. <laughs> Our plan today is simple. Gain as much altitude as we can to get up into sheep country where we can see a maximum amount of terrain. There are a million variables, and there is no way to predict how things will go. As long as we can find enough water to stay up on those ridge tops, we're prepared to be up there as long as it takes to find and kill a ram. We're well over halfway up this mountain. It's still the day before season, and our goal is to get up on the peak. At the same time, Paul is over in those peaks, and we got a hand signal system set up so he can tell us what he sees. For today, we might not go any farther than right up there. If we can get up there and locate some rams, and it looks like there's a keeper in there. We're probably gonna bivy camp and just hold tight down here somewhere and then begin making a play on him in the morning. I'm reluctant to continue down that ridge line when it's not opening day yet because I'm too afraid of just standing up with big ram and not being able to shoot. So my thinking is our day might basically end up there somewhere. As we near the crest of the ridge that we're walking on, it's approaching the time Paul and I agreed to look for each other. All of the signals we discussed earlier, he's thrown out the window, but he still expertly manages to convey the whole picture of what he's seeing to us. Paul's over there saying, there's rams above us. He's oh, over there sleeping. Okay. Paul doesn't know it yet, but he's just become my go-to charades partner for life. Now we gotta just sit tight for 15 hours. We'll get up before it gets light out and start coming up. A doll hunt exercises the full spectrum of one's hunting skills. Tenacity, perseverance, precision, and for now, patience. We'd settle in for a long, well-lit night of waiting. After a short night of fitful sleep, it's time to move. The season is open and there are rams somewhere above us. The game is on. But with sheep hunting, it's never that simple. And this time, the fog slows us down. Too far. 
foggy. It's too foggy to see in there. If we're out in the open when this fog clears up and visibility improves, we run the risk of having sheep spot us and spook off. The nasty fog bank has us stuck, afraid to move for fear of spooking any rams that might be hidden in the rocks above us. Eventually, it clears enough for us to move from outcropping to outcropping, making our way towards the peak. We press on to the top, and as the late morning sun begins to burn off the fog, the very thing I was afraid of happens. Two rams emerge from a fog bank. Danny and I are backed up against a shelf of rock, but moving is absolutely out of the question. Luckily, though, these rams have not seen us. We got a beer in the fog. Legality here is tricky. A doll ram either has to have one full curl horn or two broken or bruined horns or enough annuli on its horns to show that it's at least eight years old. It's sometimes tough to determine legality from this distance, but one of these rams has a lot going on and I want to get a closer look. If we can back out of here, There's no room for air. Every movement is slow and steady. If those rams catch a glimpse of us, they'll be gone in no time. We take turns, one of us moving, one of us watching the sheep. Thumbs up means it's all clear, thumbs down means stop. We drop down so we can keep the ridge between us and the rams. Meanwhile, and unbeknownst to us, the rams continue to move away, feeding as they work their way across the cliff face. I marked a large rock above the ram's last location, and I keep checking that rock with my rangefinder to determine my distance from the sheep without having to expose myself to their view. There's really no way for us to know this, but the rams are constantly moving and they're getting close enough to a ridge that'll put them out of the way and beyond our reach. I want to get closer. Let's see what we can do. We're gonna hang back. 
I decide to crawl to the top of the ridge to see if I'm close enough to find the big ram and get a good look at him. I've now watched this ram from every imaginable angle. One horn is broomed, but not both of them. But that right horn is full curl plus some, and I decide to go for it. I gotta wait for him to turn. I feel almost sick with anxiety as I make my way toward the downed ramp. If I didn't have the utmost confidence in it being legal, I wouldn't have even considered taking the shot. But right now, deep in my stomach is a nagging fear that I screwed up, that I didn't take enough time, that my judgment might somehow have been off. I cannot get over there quick enough. Got a lot of growth rings and full curl. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Oh. oh. That is so stressful. As good as sheep hunting is, there's nothing worse than having to cover 350 yards of broken ground. Waiting to see. Paul. Oh. <laughs> Steve, congratulations. <laughs> I saw something coming across that ridge over there. I'm like, is that Paul? I made it up just in time to see the action. One, two, three. You know, these guys solve you know, a lot of their disputes or establish their pecking order by doing some pretty vicious head blows to each other. And it's said that this head can withstand a blow 40 times what it would take to fracture a human skull. Taking a doll ram is unpredictable, never easy, and always memorable. It is one of the hardest things a big game hunter can do, and the success of a hunt like this sticks with you. And each time a memory of the hunt surfaces, it brings with it a fresh infusion of pride and wonder. Oh! 
That was a good last. flip, but it would be like if you brought that to someone in a diner, they'd be like, what the hell have you been doing back there, man? Oh, that's that's all good. Good. I don't know, man. It's steak and cake. <laughs> that is a good breakfast right there. That's high grade meat, man. That's good stuff. That's almost like you look you look around the mountains and you're you're eating a chunk of all these mountains when you take a bite of I know, and you think it tastes a little ranger by looking at the mountains. Mm, it's a nice combination, all these blueberry <laughs> pancakes and this. Gotta say, it hits the spot. God, that's good. This experience is a real live trophy that I can now share with my brother and Paul. The only thing that would make this hunt better would be to spend a few more days out here in these mountains. And as luck would have it, we're gonna do that. We have two days left, two bear tags, and some incredible country to explore.